Okay. So, keep it on going with trig substitution. Uh, equation of the day, it's not really an equation, more about uh, the idea of how we do proofs in math. One of the most powerful things we can do is proof by contradiction. So a classic example of that is how do we prove that root two is irrational? Or rather, how do we prove that root two cannot be written as a fraction? Same thing with pi and things like this. And the answer is you start by assuming it's rational and you work towards a contradiction. Okay, you work towards something like zero equals one or blah, 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 blah. It's one of the most powerful proof methods. We should probably do more of that here at the EUA, but so be it. Okay. Uh, I have added to my integration technique slide the trig substitution. So, you know, when you're looking at a bunch of integrals, we're heading towards a part where we're just going to have homework where it's just a bunch of integrals and you need to choose the technique. So the thing you should be asking yourself is, does the integrand contain a structure that resembles the derivative of an inverse trig function, right? The whole point of these trig substitutions is exploiting these, right? So, you know, all these integrals below are trig subs. You basically have two big versions, substitution one here and substitution two, the sine substitution, the tangent substitution. There are others, we will maybe see some examples. And then of course, using the trig identities, okay? The basic trig identities. Uh, okay, so, I think all I'm gonna do on this video is go through the homework. So if you feel all right about the homework and assuming my technology doesn't break, uh, you can just go look at the written up slides on Blackboard. Uh, I'm not gonna present anything new besides that. Okay, so jump in, 27. Write the integral in the form below, right? So what they're saying here is move constants around. I have three X plus five. I want it to be X minus a number. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we would do, so two X plus nine, I can factor a three out of the first factor plus. So when I factor a three out, I now have five thirds. And from the second integral, I'm going to factor out, or excuse me, the second term, I'm going to factor out a negative 5. And that gives me negative 4 fifths plus x. Okay, so we pull things out in steps. So that gives me 2x plus 9. negative 15, I can write this now as x minus negative 5 thirds times x minus 4 fifths. Okay, and so now I have up top 2, well let's say negative 2 over 15 x plus minus 9 over 15 over x minus negative 5 thirds times x minus 4 fifths. Or finally, I can simplify at least the 9 fifteenths to negative 3 fifths. And so I get, let's do it up here, that rewriting it, I should have the integral of negative 2 fifteenths x plus negative 3 fifths all over x minus negative 5 thirds times x minus 4 fifths. Right, so a is negative 5 thirds, B is 4 fifths, C is negative 2 fifteenths, and D is negative 3 fifths. Okay, so this is just useful because you have to do these sorts of moving around of constants and trig subs. 
Okay, it's it's a useful thing to do. All right. 31. So for these, uh, 31 through 38, it says complete the square and give a substitution, not necessarily trigonometric, which could be used to compute the integrals. Uh, I'm not going to do that exactly because you don't always have to compute the square to do these integrals. I'm just going to do what is necessary to do these integrals. That is a more useful thing here. Okay, so looking at this integral, the first thing I would say is, can I factor the bottom? And the answer is no, I cannot factor the bottom. So I have to complete the square. So x squared plus 2x plus 2 over 1 squared minus 2 over 1. Oops. 2 over 2, thank you, myself, 2 over 2 squared plus 2. That gives me x plus 1 squared minus plus 1. So I get the integral 1 over x plus 1 squared plus 1 dx. And really, this is, you know, we can think of this as a trig sub, but really this is a simple u sub, where u is x plus 1, du is dx, because then I get 1 over u squared plus 1 du, answer being arctan of u. Or oops, just remembered something. Turn off notifications. Okay. Okay, thirty-two. Does this one factor again? I look at it. Uh, so I need to multiply to twenty-five, add to six. No, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. So again. Complete the square. Plus 6 over 2 squared minus 6 over 2 squared plus 25. X plus 3 squared. Uh, what's that? 9 minus 9 plus 25. That should be plus 16. So my integral becomes Okay, so getting a little bit more you know, again, we could try to do this as a UDU substitution and just do it that way, but now I think it makes sense to do a trig substitution. What I want is I want x plus 3 squared to equal 16 tan squared theta. Right? So that way I can factor a 16 out and I just have tan squared theta plus 1. And so that means x plus 3 is 4 tan theta, or x is 4 tan theta minus 3. Okay. Uh, technically, I'm not going to finish the integrals. That's the substitution. That's the hard part, right? When I plug this in, Obviously, I should, I guess, finally add a dx is 4 secant squared theta. So when I plug this in, I get four secant squared theta d theta over 16 tan squared theta plus 16. Okay, factor out a 16, I get 1 fourth. And we're off. And in 
this case theta is going to be one fourth arctan x plus three over four. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to do all the integrals. I'm just going to do the substitutions. Thirty-three. Here again, can I factor the denominator? No, it does not look like it. So y squared plus 3y plus 3 over 2 squared minus 3 over 2 squared plus 3. That gives me y plus 3 halves squared. I'm going to have minus 9 fourths plus 3. 9, let's rewrite 3 as 9 thirds, or excuse me, 4, 12 fourths. So that gives me y plus 3 halves squared plus three fourths. And so my integral becomes one over y plus three halves squared plus three fourths dy. And the substitution I want is y plus three halves squared is equal to three fourths tan squared theta. Okay, or y plus 3 halves is equal to root 3 over 2 tan theta, or y equals root 3 over 2 tan theta minus 3 halves. There's my substitution that will work to evaluate this integral. Turn the page here. Okay, so this one, it says complete the square and give a substitution. I would say complete the square. Well, I mean, my point here is that we don't need to complete the square. The smart way to do this integral is to recognize that u is x squared plus 2x plus 2. And du is 2x plus 2 dx, or 1 half du is x plus 1 dx. So my integral just becomes 1 half 1 over u du. Right? That's the simple way to do this integral, or the right way even, I would argue. Right? Completing the square, blah, 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 blah. Nonsense. I think why they want you to complete this. Well, what happens if we complete the square on that? Let's just see. So x squared plus 2x plus 2 over 2 squared minus 2 over 2 squared plus 2 gives me x plus 1 squared plus 1 does that u equals x plus 1 I just get u over u squared plus 1 yeah I mean you could do it this way it's a bad way to do it though 35. Okay, what are we going to do here? Well, at the bottom I have negative z squared plus 2z. So what can I do? Well, complete the square. So negative z squared. Actually, let's write it this way. z squared minus 2z plus minus 2 over 2 
squared minus minus 2 over 2 squared. That gives me minus, oops, z plus 1. tricky I want to do let's do let's start fresh here we're gonna do this in my head okay minus z squared plus 2z plus 1 minus 1 minus z squared minus 2z plus 1 yeah here we go and then let the minus here, plus one. So that is the plus one that is left there. Yes, okay, this is what we want. That gives us minus z minus one squared plus one, or one minus z minus one squared. Okay, that's the, with this being my plus negative 2 over 2, or I guess we could do positive 2 over 2 squared minus 2 over 2 squared. Yeah, okay. So now my integral becomes 4 over root 1 minus z minus 1 squared dz. Okay, here we go. What's the substitution I want? Well, 1 minus, I want z minus 1 to be sine theta. So z sine theta minus 1, right, because that leads to the integral for cosine theta d theta over root 1 minus sine squared theta. There we go. That's our answer for that one. Okay. 36 looks similar except because I have that z minus 1 on top I'm good to go u 2z minus z squared du 2 minus 2z dz or 1 half du 1 minus z dz. Now I need to factor out another minus sign. Minus one half du z minus one dz. So then my integral becomes negative one half one over u du. Simpler one here. Okay, 37. Again, u du. Right? Just fix the constants. Hopefully I don't need to go through that one. 38. Same thing. u du fix the constants all right 41 just a classic partial fractions so 
I am going to write it as 1 over a over x plus 7 plus b over x minus 2. Or 1 is equal to a times x minus 2 plus b x plus 7. I am going to say let x equal minus 7, and I've got 1 is equal to a times minus 9, minus 1 ninth. Let x equal 2, 1 is equal to b times 9, b is 1 ninth. So my integral becomes, pull the minus sign up front right away, minus 1 ninth integral 1 over x plus 7 dx plus 1 ninth integral 1 over x minus 2 dx, which is equal to negative 1 ninth logarithm x plus 7 plus 1 ninth logarithm x minus 2 plus c. All right, 44. Uh, same deal. Look at this, and the first question should be, does it factor? And here it does. one over right so it's a partial fractions so one over x plus one x plus four equal to a over x plus one plus b over x plus four 1 is equal to a times x plus 4 plus b times x plus 1. Let's let x equal minus 1. I get 1 is equal to a times 3. Oh, did I do that right? So a equals one third. Let x equal minus four. So that one is equal to b times minus three. B is minus one third. So I get one third integral one over x plus one dx minus one third integral one over x plus four dx. One third ln x plus one minus one third ln x plus four. Plus C. Okay, bonus questions. Bonus questions are just integrals I'm adding. Make sure we can spot what we do here. And this one is in fact just simple u, du. u is phi cubed minus one. du is three phi squared d phi, or one-third du 
is 5 squared d5. My integral becomes 1 third u to the fourth du. Pull the 1 third out. 1 third, 1 fifth u to the fifth. Oops. Plus c or 1 15th phi cubed minus 1 to the 5th plus c. All right, last one. Again, simple u. u is logarithm of theta. 1 over theta d theta. And so I just get the integral of tangent u du. So how do we do tangent u? We write that as the integral sine u over cosine u du. Now we do another substitution. w is cosine u, dw, negative sine u, du, or negative dw is sine u, du. So now my integral becomes the integral of negative 1 over w w or negative logarithm of w plus c. So let's go back. Negative logarithm of w plus c is equal to the negative logarithm of cosine of u plus c, which is equal to the negative logarithm of the cosine of the log of theta plus c. Weird function. Okay, weird function. But, I mean, this was a weird thing to start with, right? 1 over theta tan log theta. Okay, we'll stop there. Uh, we're just going to, th these are all the integral techniques really we're going to learn. Anything else we're going to do with integration is going to be an application or we're going to talk about improper integrals, which are integrals that go to infinity and things like this. But that's it. These are the techniques. So we're really just going to be practicing from for a while out now. Okay. Goodbye.